single lesson. Trying to figure out what to do for this podcast. Uh, Beck from Phosphor G in Denver. So mine's still a little... Um, but this is what I came up with. We're going to take an empty folder. Nothing in it. And from scratch, we're going to build a web mapping site that has a map. Does a little choropleth mapping. Geocodes. And does a point and polygon overlay. All some of the most common fundamental things you'll have to do with a web mapping site. We're going to use Google Maps API and Google Fusion Tables to accomplish that. So you won't need to host any of your own data or any of that kind of stuff. All you need is a web server to put some HTML and JavaScript files on. Uh, hopefully this will help everybody out no matter what level you're at right now. We'll be going over some HTML, some HTML5, CSS for styling, basic JavaScript, Google Maps API, and Google Fusion Tables. Hopefully everybody will find something useful in it. And it'll take more than one podcast. It'll take at least two. I'll start out with this one with uh, just basically styling up a page and adding a map and maybe geocoding, see how much time we have. I think you'll find in hour, hour and a half or so, we're going to go from nothing to a functional, well-styled web mapping site that you'd feel comfortable deploying uh, for your business or for your local government or what have you. So, let's get started. And away we go. I'm using GNOME Shell on Ubuntu 11.10 beta, so everyone cross your beta fingers. We're going to be building your generic, uh, you know, map site with a header and a sidebar and a map and a footer, and you know, just your generic map 101 sort of thing. So, what do we got? Ah, look at oh, oh, it's an empty folder. Scary, scary, scary. So, we're going to start with HTML5 boilerplate. Unless you're like this genius, I would go find something like boilerplate to start with and it's just a great HTML5 template with all of the best practice kind of things built right in so download that ooh you can tell I'm not at work that downloaded fast okay there's HTML5 boilerplate let's go back to our empty folder now there's a lot of stuff in here. There's some ant build scripts and tests and all kinds of stuff. What you really need is CSS, image, JavaScript, and your index.html. You can include favicons and humans.txt, robot.txt, and a bunch of uh, good HT access rules. So good really that you should put them right into your Apache configuration. But we'll just start, oh, let's get favicon too. We'll just start out with this, drag it on in there. If you are using, say, a secure operating system like Linux, make sure once you put it in, you uh, Apache can read all those files. Now we've got them in there. Happy day. Let's go over to your favorite editor or my favorite editor, Komodo Edit. Here's all the stuff we just put in. We've got index.html. Now if you're using something like IIS, you can change that to default.htm. We've got our JavaScript. The JavaScript we're going to be writing in is script.js. And the CSS is style.css. Now let's see what this looks like. Let's go localhost mercurial my cool site. Oh, nothing. Ugh, scary, scary. That's all right. That's because we don't have anything in here. Take a look at index.html. Basically, it starts out with uh, we'll give it we'll give this a title, my cool site, and you can fill in all the other kind of meta author and description. Viewport for mobile stuff, modernizer. There's our content. It loads all the main JavaScript at the end, which it should. It's getting jQuery from Google CDN. We'll just up that to the latest release. Plugins is where you'd put any kind of plugins. Script is where you put your kind of custom code for the page. It's got built-in tracking for Google Analytics if you want that. We're not going to track this. 
and prompt uh, IE6 users with Google Chrome Frame, uh, you know, for those Amish nut jobs still using IE6. All right, let's put in some content so we can actually see something on the page. We'll just make an H1 tag because that's probably what's going to go here. Say header, their header in our main area. That's where we're going to have that sidebar and the map. A side is the HTML5 semantic way to do a, a side sidebar. And we'll just put a H3 tag in there and oh, need to be an opening H3 tag. So we know it's there. And then we'll close that side. Then we'll make a div for our map. Like so. Close that up. And there's our footer. Again, HTML5 semantic tag footer. You don't have to go to div ID equals footer anymore. We'll just write in footer. And see what we got. Well, is anybody impressed? Nope. Nope, not really. Let's do a little CSS. We'll save the main CSS toward the end. Start at CSS. See all that middle part. It's all wrapped in this container tag. Container div. So we'll go. Now in the CSS file, see a bunch of normalized CSS and basic content. And down toward the middle end, You'll see primary styles and author. That's where you want to put your stuff. So we'll put container. We will give it a max width of 960 pixels. And we'll float it in the middle of the page. Bada boom. There. Still not very impressive. Just to show you where that is, we'll just put in a border one pick solid and we'll just give it a light gray so that's where our container is floated into the middle of the page now now what do you want to do what do you do okay we've got our side and our map a div tag or an aside essentially a block level element so it fills the maximum possible width so that's why they're stacked one on top of the other. We want these to be side by side. So what we're going to do is in our CSS file, we'll take that aside. We will float it to the left and give it a width of, let's say, 25%. Then we'll take our map you give it a width of, I usually like to give it like a percentage lower than 100%. This is because things like borders aren't always interpreted in your width. And we'll float it to the right. Boop, 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 boom. See what that gives us. Okay, a side map footer. Oh, something weird's going on here. What, is, what, Tobin? Why is our footer up here with what, what, what? Well, here's the thing, and this throws a lot of people off. If you float an element inside a container, that element can go beyond the boundary of that container because that container doesn't automatically compute the height of, of the, uh, containing floated divs. Once you float something, it's no longer in the flow. Now what you used to do f is to fix that is you would, at the end of your divs, you, you just have a div that does nothing but uh, style equals clear bowl. And that would fix it. That makes a, it's kind of non-semantic. You've got a tag in there doing nothing. What you do now, and Boilerplate has this too, is you a little hack called ClearFix, which just uses a uh, your your some before and after pseudo elements to stick some content in there and basically fix that for you. 
So this is our container. We're going to go class equals clear fix. Save that, give that a little whirl. And now you see we've got our stuff in line. This aside is a little bit down because it's an H3 and that changes. It's got some default top and bottom padding to it. Padding or margin, I forget. So now we're all lined up. Happy day. What should we do now? Hmm, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, why don't we stick a map in here? Can we stick a map in here already? I think we can. I like coffee. Do you like coffee? I like coffee. Okay, div id equals map canvas. That's what Google likes to call their map these days. That div. And we'll give that map canvas over in our styles. Do, 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 do. How tall do you want to make it? Did I hear a 600 pixels? I thought I did. Height 600. Ooh, 600 pixels. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Let's give our map a border too, uh, and a width. Width. Let's say 99% because we're going to stick a border on it. And we'll say border one pick solid black. And yeah, I think that's all right. Now we've got that in there. We've got it in there. Let's go script that out. Script author, put your name here. Now, uh, jQuery has a couple of different, uh, you can do like a document ready and a window load. Yeah, actually, I like to stick the map stuff in the window load because it's a little slower. And sometimes it can give you problems if you don't do it that way. All right, there's our window load. Now let's make an initialize map. Uh, initialize map. Um, let's make that function. Hey, that's not how you comment out this stuff. Idiot. All right. Function initialize map. No arguments. All right. Now let's just go to Google site and steal some code. See Google map and maps API. Tutorial. Hello world. See this function initialize, we are just going to grab that. All right. It's grabbing our map canvas. There's our options. Now the zoom and the let long to get to, that's just kind of a, you've got to know what works for whatever your area you want to work with. Uh, See what is around Mecklenburg County's middle? That would be like 35.270 and negative 80.837. I memorized that. Really. All right. So, got that, got that, got that. Echo site. Oh, fail. Unexpected token 924. What do we do? What do we do? Oh, we got an extra one of those in there. And you know what? We're not even calling this yet. Let's see, init What do you think of that? Google is not fine. Oh, we've got to load the Google Maps. See, this is this is why I usually prep this stuff ahead of time, so you can't see how dumb I really am. Go back to our index HTML. Let's put it after jQuery here. We'll just grab that. You don't need to specify the type anymore in HTML5. Set sensor to false. And make this all one line. I just got a new keyboard. Not sure I like it. All right. Map. Hey, look. Mecklenburg County, right there, interactive map. Do you know 10 years ago how long it would take you to get to this? 
Too long. Way too long. All right, we got map, side, header, footer. Now, what do we need to do next? Well, one of the things we need to do is geocode. Now, where do we want to stick that geocode stuff? Or the search box. You could put it in the header, you could put it in the aside. We're going to stick it in the aside for now, and I'm probably going to move it back up here later. We'll make it fancy when we style it. So, let's see. Let's go, let's go. Go back to Google Maps. Go back to services, geocoding. I'm going to give you the what for, how to. And look there. All right. Grab that little input button. Go over to our side. Put it right there. Input. Input. Now it's giving you some script for coding an address and geocoder. Doot, doot, doot. Let's just grab that whole thing. Remember, good programmers write. Great programmers steal. There's our code. Okay. We're going to put up in top. We need to make these global. That means we can take this var off of here. Got our geocoder. Got those elements. What do you think? Is that going to work? Could be that easy. I don't know. Alright, there's a box. Can you find Sydney for us? No! What do we got? What do we got? Geocode of... Oh! We forgot to put in in our initialize event making our geocoder. It's an important thing. Boop, 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 boop. Bam! You don't have to do these sound effects when you code. It's purely optional. Look! We're geocoding just like that. How about uh, 16845 Doe Valley Court Cornelius, North Carolina. Can you can you do that? Oh, look at that! Up, oh, up, oh, oop! Oh, no info window. We can fix that. So now we've got a map, and we're geocoding just like that, just that fast. What should we do next? I don't know. Oh, I got an idea. Let's uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Should we add an info window? First, we're gonna fix this up a little bit because I don't like how this works how their default works. Now the cool, the way the cool kids put that suggestion text in there now is with something called placeholder. Enter address. And on all browsers that don't suck, what that does is, see you get this nice light gray text and as soon as you click in it goes away. There's nothing in there when you click away, yeah, it comes back. Now, it won't do that with crap like Internet Explorer uh, old stuff, but, you know, yeah, I can live with that. Now, we're doing an on-click event for that button. What I don't like about that is because people like to type something in here and just hit their enter button. Not reach over, grab their mouse, and go click that. So, what we're going to do, hmm, what should we do? We should make a form. How about a form? I can do a form. All right. Form ID equals, we'll say, hmm, geocode. Now it's given an action of basically die. That means don't do anything. Alright, alright, alright. Close that form. A little proper indentation here. Now we've got that in a form. What do we need to do now? We need to go to script and we're going to make a document dot ready. Document dot ready function bracket bracket bracket. All right, let's do geocode form and we'll do. Doop 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 doop. Geocode. 
dot submit. Boom, boom, boom. We'll give it a function. We'll just say code address, which is the function that's already there. Boop. I think that would do it. Oh, yeah. and we should go back here and we'll just change this from a button to a type submit. And encode is geeky. We'll just say go. Is that going to work? Oh, we don't need non click for this anymore either. That's going to submit the form. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Let's see, 700 North Tron Street, Charlotte. Oh, look at there. Boop, there we are. Just had to hit enter. Much better. Your users will thank you. So now we're geocoding. You know, I like to zoom in a bit when I geocode. So for that code address, where it sets the uh, map set center. We are going to do map.set zoom, we'll say 15. That's close. And under North Tron Street, Charlotte. Bam! Oh, we're on a roll, people. So now we're geocoding. We have a map, hmm, which we do. Want to make an info window? Is an info window too much? Am I going too fast? I don't know. One thing you need to do with an info window is make your marker global. Hello. Hello, bad. All right. Make our marker global. And then let's see, info window. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, let's go get some sample code. I can't remember how to do this. Beep, 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 beep. I think that's an overlay. Info window. Remember, copy, copy, copy. That's what we do. We copy. Info window. Okay. Content string var info window. So let's put that over in our code after we make this marker. Var info window. Hello, bad intentions. New Google Maps info window, content, we'll say, uh, what's that, let's see, I believe that it would be results, you don't need to put this in quotes, results, zero, this is all documented. When you get the results back from a geocode, it can have more than one match. What we're doing here, this example, is we're just getting the first one, results.0. And we're going to get uh, formatted address. Now we need to tie that info window to that marker. There's where it made a marker. Yeah, let's copy that code. Copy, copy, copy. Bam! Oop. Hello, bad intentions. We're adding an event listener, listener to our marker on click. We're going to open that window. What do you think? Second work? I don't know. Sounds sketchy. Let's see. 700 North Tryon, Charlotte. Mmm! Mmm! Oh! Oh, it hurts. So, now we're geocoding. We've got an info window. We've got a map. We've got our page looking somewhat less ugly. We're going to fix all that. Now, what do we need to do? Well, at this point, we want to add a fusion table. And then we're going to do stuff with that. Let's see. How long have I been recording this? Do I have time for this? 22, 32. We're going to have to save this for next time. 
But so far, we've gone in, we got HTML5 boilerplate template. We made a basic layout with a header and a side, a map, loaded Google Maps into it, we're geocoding, we're adding a marker, and we're making an info window for the marker with that address. Not bad for say 15 minutes. In the next one, we're going to see if we can squeeze it all in in one more. We're going to take some data, we're going to convert it to KML, we're going to upload it to Google Fusion Tables, we're going to add it to our map, and then we are going to do a point and polygon overlay after we do our geocode and determine what polygon that point finds it, itself in. Alright, that's it. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.